it could be worse. This was running all last night and it got jammed. It was jammed at two o'clock or something when I came down this morning and this bit the fuller was just stuck up in the top in the air and then I tried resetting it myself by winding the snail cam around and it did the same thing. It doesn't jam at that point if this is in the air but if the snail cam continues to turn which it will with this in the air it means bits are in the way and then that's what grinds everything to a halt and all that's wrong is it needs a little bit more of a pull everything seems to be working gravity I mean it just hung in mid-air it wasn't jammed by anything it just needed a bit of a pull so I'm going to put a weight on and I can't believe very impressed with AGM lure fishing because I ordered these yesterday afternoon stroke evening this morning they're going through the letterbox I can't believe it these lovely brass weights with an ill through the middle five grams each so that's going to look really nice as a dog we're dog sitting hasn't stopped barking for the last three hours while it misses its owner. Joy. I think I might have to take myself for a walk in the park. Anywho. Interesting instructions. May contain sharp hooks. Yeah. For fishing use only. Well, that's a shame because I was going to use it for a steampunk clock. Not for human consumption. They do look rather tasty. Not suitable for children. Right. I'll bear that in mind. Don't play with brass, children. I ordered plenty of them because it's exciting. So I'll get this hooked on there and then we'll see whether it still works. Well, whether it actually starts working. I've got the weight attached. It does look rather nice, even though I say so myself. I've attached it currently with a bit of blue tack, but equally it would be possible to perhaps drip some molten lead in the back of the, it's a little recess. Right, reaching the top. And... Right, that worked, it's gone to PM. Lovely. We have wood. It's arrived. I've been waiting a week for it, but it has finally arrived. Nothing like overdoing, over engineering something. So that is just for the base and the floor of the shed. The actual shed itself, if you remember from last time, let's see a thing. Is that, which I really can't believe that actually makes a big shed sort of six by eight or something or other, I can't remember. Perhaps I've got inches and millimetres mixed up or something, or metres and inches, I don't know. Unfortunately though, one thing they didn't deliver, any screws, would you believe a builder's merchant, a week to get the order together, no screws. But look what I found in the extension. I needed, because there's my plan, I needed uh, what, three screws for each joint, 15 jo 14 joints, 52 screws. I thought, no, there's only a few of these left. I just counted them out, and there's 62. Brilliant. So there's actually nothing to stop me from starting building it. Very exciting. This is all very interesting. Looks like the shed is the right size, because I've just started reading the destructions, having been presented with a whole load of these different pieces. And they've printed the name code on each one, which is fantastic individually. And you have to join them together with these. I'm very impressed so far, even though it's not, it's not that flimsy either, but there's, there's lots of zinc galvanised or whatever on it. Quite thick it seems, so that's nice. I'll get this together. The thing is, I didn't know whether to start on the shed or to start on the base, but I can't find anywhere details that say um, the actual size of the shed. It's so flimsy I didn't know what to think. So I'm going to start putting it together, at least these channels, so I can try and figure it out because I've only got the thickness of a piece of wood that this is going to rest on. So, you know, the concrete, it says I'll leave 75 mil around the edge, but I haven't really got that. So, it's the gift to myself that keeps on giving. Look at that. My son has designed for a school project a steampunk style seat. I'm just printing all this and it's printed all the lower bits and I did wonder whether it would cope with this. Look at that. It's a hollow tube that allows you to adjust the height of the seat. It's, it's just incredible. And look, isn't that an incredible thing? The Ender 3 Pro. Look at that. I've never tried to print 
a single thing this high, but it's for my son's steampunk chair. So it's printed the two cups. There we are. It's just incredible. I know that you can argue that it doesn't put any force on this, it just keeps repeating as it goes up, but that is incredible. It's managed to achieve that. So exciting. It's a couple of days later and I've got the shed assembled. Interesting way of putting it together with um, shaped edge parts and this corrugated, which seems very good quality galvanised sheet. It's very thickly galvanised, which is great, and some screws and things. So that's ready to go. So what I'm doing now is making the base. Here's me plans gone. Right, slightly simpler than before, slightly less pieces. And I've almost judged it right. I haven't actually worked out the floor in the floorboard, obviously. Complete overkill, although there was the cheapest way of getting it using decking, and it's all treated. I just decided to pay a bit more to get the proper C24 quality of preserved timber, which is good enough for building structures, houses and things, because it's proper pressure treated, and I want to just paint it on or sprayed a bit on to make it look nice. You can see how far it's actually been squeezed in under the pressure. I'm also going to paint the ends that I've sawn with some preservative of my own. You can't beat a bit of sawing action. And saw this off. This type of saw is so useful. It really is. Because <clears throat> it's portable and everything, and you can set the angle. Obviously, that's set at 90 degrees, so it's a perpendicular cut. But equally, you can push this round down, and then the whole thing will twist around. So you can set the degrees there while still going at 90 degrees. And or there's a bit round the back here that you can loosen. And then the, well, I'll show you why not, dear friends. And then. If it's not rusted completely, let me get my foot in. There we are. So then you can set it to a particular angle there. Lots of different, and it tells you, you can read the angle off, a little dial thing, which is absolutely fabulous because when you're building things like roofs, where you've got the joists coming up, butting against other things, if you think about the structure of roof, are so complicated, very, very clever structures. They're very complicated, but if once you've got one of these things, you can just set up the different angles you require and it makes you look very clever. Oh yeah, that's right, after I finished building the extension, the brickwork and all that, I um, didn't feel confident, confident enough to do the roof timbers to create the stru structure of the roof structure. So I, um, I got a professional roofer in, An amazing bloke, single bloke, came in. The only equipment he had was a handsaw and a protractor like a school protractor and a pencil that was it no other equipment absolutely incredible and he built the whole really complicated roof structure staggered roof structure just using those tools amazing skill any whore i've now got my kit of bits together which is terribly really exciting so i will now go and have some lunch and then build this base I do sometimes wonder about my culinary choices. Hottest day of the year, and I'm having vegetable soup and toast. I do like vegetable soup and toast, and I've got a fan to sit in front of. I suppose if I was clever, I could have had a gazpacho soup for Red Dwarf fans, but no. I am just wondering whether this project, or this part of it, could take a hell of a lot less time than I thought it was. I've been dreading it a bit, waking up in the middle of the night worrying about ventilation, water well, I just just get on with it. I've also decided I'm not going to stay near and um, preserve the ends of the wood because, well here we are, the, that's not a very good example really but we can't see it on the camera but the preservative has gone all around the outside and if every one of these is smothered with some nice thick glue, no affiliation, haven't used it before but seems to be readily available and it's waterproof to some standard or other, then that's going to protect these against water ingress and stick them all together. I could have cut lots of lovely wooden joints and things, but you know, I just want a shed basically. Not a work of art, just a shed. There comes a time when you just have to start it. Stop 
prevaricating, thinking about how I can keep it square, how I can do this, that and the other. I've swept up over there so it's all nice and clean, if not level. And I just thought, just get on with it. And then my wife said I'd had one lunch, and my wife said, oh, do you fancy some mushrooms, fried mushrooms on toast? I said, oh yeah, that'd be nice. And so ten minutes later I had another lunch provocating even further very nice now I've got to bend down and things although I think I'm going to work out how to do this standing up now I can't bend down so I'm just going to put it all together the joints will stay flexible for 24 hours it's very satisfying squeezing all the lovely glue out and getting a really nice tight joint brilliant I'll get the other middle ones done first and then we'll move on and get other bits done most satisfying so I've got them screwed together and I've turned it upside down so I can get this top bit on. Front to back, the back wants to go up a little bit, which is good. Back is level. Fabulous. And remember how much time and trouble I took when I laid these originally for the original wooden shed, which then got moved up the garden. And that's, that's not bad at all. I think what I'm going to do now is use this stamp proof course as a spacer, might cut squares of it and use it as a spacer. That'll have two purposes, three purposes in fact, that can't be bad. It'll keep it off the ground and level it. It'll give a space underneath for air to travel around so it doesn't get too damp because I'm going to put a damp proof membrane underneath the floor and something else. It'll keep the wood off the ground so it won't be so wet. I think that's it. Right, let's go on and do that. That works really well. Oh, well, there's this corner. You can see how many. I think there's about 20 there. I did the front first and then moved to the back. And you can see how high that is. That's got to be about, I think it's 45 layers. But, you know, needs must. The only thing I've realised now, of course, is considering Aratus Aratus, because it's obviously living in a city, um, there are lots around, and this would be the perfect nesting place, a virtual rat housing estate if you like because they can get in underneath now all along the edge and the back absolutely perfect, waterproof, warm, protected so I'm now considering moving this hard up against or very very close to the bricks both there and there I've got rat corner sorted out and now this is against that and that's too small for your average rats to get through and the same with that so that's good now next thing to consider which has kept me awake for several nights damping damp proofing it because obviously this is meant to be concrete and then you're meant to have the base of the shed sitting on this the aluminium u-shape um, but there's holes in it and a join in the middle so water will get out collecting it basically any that runs down the side will collect in the bottom like a trail and run out in each corner, so that's why I originally got this in fact. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to make an executive decision, I'm going to staple gun one piece along each side, overlapping on the corner and just hanging over slightly the edge of the wood. I'll do that now, because then the shed can sit on that, and thankfully this has even got the crisscross, raised crisscrosses, which means any water that does collect can't really move at all around at all, which is good. It lives, or something like that. I hope this is a very good example of the wonders of shell structures because it's got absolutely no strength at the moment. Obviously now I've fixed the first corner together. That's now rigid. But without these two supports fixing onto handy screws, very sharp ones that stick out on the inside, but in mind, um, it would be, it wobbles all over the place. It's just like paper. Let's get the other walls up. Well, that was an experience, and I'm happy not to repeat. But, four screws down each corner, just overlap, and I've put the glue, whatever you call it, instant grab glue down, just to make sure it is sealed and secure. Welcome to my new Bijou residence. Nice sunny climbs. Uh, no floor as yet, but I'm very pleased because it turns out that the floor was exactly the right size, so it fits perfectly. So that's good. It's not a lot really else to say, other than the next thing is to um, fill that hole in. There's the first floorboard. Two, two, two. I told you. Two, two, two. Now let's just see 
if it will go in angularly. Apologies for the camera. Oh, it does. Well, will you look at that? Trying to look at too many things. There you go. I've got that far, that's not bad. It's really exciting doing this. It's, it reminds me of when I used to, when I was little growing up, making camps and things out of old bits of timber and stuff that we could find lying around. So I've just got this bit to finish off. Hopefully, now to that bit, or those bits. All done. And it fits perfectly. Doesn't actually. Lengthwise it's fine. But I think the wooden base I made yesterday wasn't quite square so once all these are pushed together there's a gap that's about oh, I don't know 25 centimeter uh, 25 millimeters at one end going down to about 20 or 15 at the other how embarrassing so an executive decision later I've decided I'm going to have a little gap between each one the instructions say these gable end cover things I have to bend them myself along these strange sort of dented things now in the past I would have struggled with the vice, but not any more, dear friends, because look what I've bought. I've been meaning to buy one of these for a long time. Cast iron and nice big magnets. That, and bearing in mind I'm looking through the viewfinder. Right, that goes on there. It's a metal folder. And the other one, the other side, consists of a series of different lengths of the um, something else sharp that you can take out and lock in so if you're doing a sort of trapped hidden catch-22 type fold you can replace the relevant ones with the right sizes don't want to go too far this way so line that up and you tighten your vase oh look at that a little bit tighter actually not quite sure how much tighter to go because you oh, let's have a look. Oh, look at that Ooh. that's so exciting being able to do that now finally because you use pliers and use bits of the vice and it it never works out well I might even tighten that tips you a little bit more a little bit off. oh joy unbounded excellent we have a problem Houston it was all going so well and this is, we'll put that little end cap on, and there's a big gap here. Now I reckon they have accidentally made a mistake, because this ridge overlapped in the middle when it joined. It quite clearly, well, quite unclearly shows how to join that ridge section. Reminds me of one of those old Haynes manuals. The building, rebuilding an old Escort Mark 1 gearbox, following all the Haynes manual instructions. And I was very pleased, because I only had three little metal bits left over. I was very pleased until it kept jumping out of first gear and I had to get it rebuilt professionally anyway. Mistake. But, I've got some nice tape, metallic tape, so I'll stick a bit of that on. There we are. It's not going to win any prizes, but the main thing is it doesn't let water into the shed and turn all my lovely cardboard boxes into paper mache. It is duct tape, so it'll be interesting to see how it copes on a roof under direct sunlight. You may remember it from such classics as how to build the pretend mercury compensated pendulum from the chronograph clock. Mm, it's lovely stuff. It's very satisfying because it's very sticky and it keeps its shape. Anyway, stop massaging that and get on with it. So there we have it. Hopefully waterproofed and complete. Now, as with any steampunk shed, it definitely needs some sort of decoration to imply what it contains. So I think it's only fair to put a gauge on it. Lovely, but what's inside the shed? Da, da, da. Thanks very much for watching with a lot of echo. I'm very pleased to say that I'm still testing this and it is working perfectly. And I do apologise for having gone completely off task Nothing about steampunk, just sheds, but this is still working and now I've got somewhere I can store all my packaging which means I can sort out the um, workshop and be able to move around. I've just realised that no shed themed 
video would be complete without some sort of comment on how good it is, was, will be. Well, this was a, an Absco Premier Garden Shed, Australian made. And I decided to go for a metal one this time because I have got three wooden sheds and a wooden loft and they're all full of junk so I thought I'd go with a metal one this time. It was pretty easy to put together. It looks like it's going to be waterproof. It cost about uh, just under £300 which isn't bad for one that size considering it's, it's got a 20 or 30 year guarantee against rust and things. So that's not bad. Very pleased with it. Also, the company I ordered it off had them in stock and delivered them within five days, which is amazing because you look at a lot of sheds these days and you can wait up to about six months for them. I don't know why that is. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Well, that didn't take long. Waterproofing test coming up. Ooh. Droplets.